Hi, Dr. Andrea Maxim, naturopathic doctor and the creator of the Maxim Movement. And this is the second video in our series of videos on exactly what a food sensitivity is, how it gets triggered, ways that we can test for it, and of course how we can treat it naturally. So let's go into more detail today about the exact difference between a food sensitivity or a food intolerance versus a food allergy. Now, now first and very easy, a food allergy typically is something that you're born with. So this is going to be something that you know right as soon as infancy or early childhood, yes I have a peanut allergy or an egg allergy. Whereas a food sensitivity is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction, meaning it could happen when you're 10 years old, 18 years old. 30 years old, it you just don't have that exact timing when it's going to occur. And usually lifestyle factors are definitely going to play a role in this, or it's just something that was bound to happen, it just happens later on in life. And the key things that differentiate these items is the immune markers. So with regards to your food sensitivities, we're looking at a marker called IgG. An IgG is actually, think of IgG like the gut. So G stands for gut and it's the markers that are given off when there's a food sensitivity present. And what actually happens is these little IgG markers create little complexes around food proteins or food particles. And the more and the larger these complexes get, the more they're gonna sit on the intestinal tract lining and cause inflammation and therefore start causing things like leaky gut, which we'll go into further detail about. With regards to a food allergy, we're looking at a marker called IgE. IgE, think of IgE -E like excitatory. It's going to be in your face. It's almost an immediate reaction when you're exposed to something. And that will then trigger a histamine response because the cells we're looking at here are the mast cells. Um, and then it's going to cause the asthma, the itchy skin, the itchy throat, potentially severe things like um, closing of the throat or um, not able to catch your breath or even swelling that can start blocking airways. But some people will even have contact issues. So contact dermatitis is very much a localized immune response and this is again the IgE marker. If we're looking at things like celiac disease, we'd be looking at another marker called IgA, as well as other autoimmune markers, because celiac disease is an autoimmune condition. So therefore, we'd be looking at things like transglutaminase and other markers that are associated with that, which we'll also go into more detail in our next video. But there's also another factor that comes into play here, and these things are called epitopes. Epitopes are actually the IgE allergens, or excuse me, epitopes are actually the allergens that are given off by different foods that creates an IgE response, but it's kind of different than the mast cell response. This is creating more of a chronic immune cell response. The chronic immune cells we're talking about here are called T cells, and we will go into further detail about that in um, our fourth video in this series. So always remember IgG, G for gut, is your food sensitivities, your delayed reaction, IgE, excitatory in your With regards to breaking down the exact reaction of a food sensitivity or food intolerance, as I mentioned, it is a delayed response. So here's just a graphic to go through this one more time. It's labeled as a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, and this is where we get those complexes forming in the blood. So I have an example here, pizza, but of course it's going to be a little less complex than that. It would either be dairy or gluten or maybe a mixture of both, but these IgG molecules are going to start to form these little complexes, and they're going to start to create these little bundles of immune response and food allergen. And eventually what's going to happen is that these complexes are then going to start binding or attaching to the digestive tract lining and start causing inflammation. So at first they could just feel like cramping pain, maybe a bit of diarrhea, constipation is also a very common symptom, or even just gas or bloating. But over time it's going to start causing a longer term reaction and it's going to look more systemic. And as we mentioned in the previous video, 
food sensitivities so commonly get disregarded because the symptoms that people are suffering from seem so unrelated, like joint pain, muscle pain, um, skin issues, skin rashes. And it's just not as simple to say, oh, well, every single reaction is happening localized to that particular thing. We always have to make sure that we're treating the gut first. And then finally, over time, what's going to happen is the more we're being exposed to these foods, the more inflammation we're creating, the more we're breaking down those microvilli on the um, layer of the digestive tract, we're creating leaky gut, so these cells are now becoming more leaky because we're breaking down those tight junctions, and once those allergens and complexes can get through that wall, they go into the bloodstream, and it's basically a free-for-all. The key thing to understand though with food sensitivities is that it doesn't happen always on the first try. And this is why a lot of patients will say, I've been eating dairy my whole life, why is it a problem now? Well, it's kind of an accumulative response. So you can have a little bit here, a little bit there, but it, it slowly but surely mounts in your immune system and then eventually will have a much greater response. Or when we're talking about doing um, food avoidance for four weeks and then re-challenging, the immune system has enough time to kind of regroup. So when it's reintroduced to that antigen or that food um, particle again that you have a sensitivity to, it's a boom in your face almost an immediate response and then you can identify which foods do and do not work for you and we'll talk about that in the next video. So ultimately when it comes to food sensitivities the most common ones we see are cow dairy, we see um, fish or um, seafood sensitivities. Gluten, of course, is a huge one and we're talking more and more about that in the media but there's also soy corn and with soy I've actually seen it to the extent of even legume allergies so um, all the food groups involved in the legume family are soy, lentils, chickpeas so sometimes it's not just about one food sometimes you have to look at the food group. Nightshades are a huge example of food sensitivities that we found most correlated to arthritic or excuse me most correlated to arthritic-like symptoms, but definitely eggs are a big part of this, so we just never know. And I've actually even had a few patients where fruit was their sensitivity and it caused chronic constipation. So now that you know the difference between what a food allergy is and a food sensitivity, I hope you pay attention to the next video where we'll talk about the testing involved and how you can determine which food sensitivities you may have. If you have any questions or concerns, definitely post them in the comment box below or email me directly by visiting my website www.themaximmovement.com. If you're receiving this with our weekly video newsletter, then you can just respond to me e uh, directly via email. But as always, have a happy and healthy day.